Welcome Internet to a Psychologist Casual Review and today I want to review a very interesting article by Mene Klein on the sense of loneliness. So in French it was translated by se sentir seul, which is not quite the same meaning. In French it literally translates to to feel alone. So it's not exactly the same and it's an interesting choice of translation. So why I wanted to talk about it is because I found it to be very interesting as loneliness is not a concept that's too often talked about in psychoanalysis. Of course, it's the ability to be alone by Winnicott, but it's not quite the same sin. For, for Mel and Klein here, we're really talking about the feeling of loneliness itself and how it applies to the psyche. And that feeling is something very inwards. And it does not matter that there are other people around or if you feel a sense of belonging. I mean, it's really disconnected from the external world. It's really the inner world that's here um, in the spotlight. Because for her, it's a universal feeling. Loneliness is not never something you grow out of. It's never something you fundamentally... Um, transcend, meaning that you're always going to feel lonely in a way. And I found that to be very refreshing as a take, because often there's that idea that once the true self is found, that all feelings of loneliness will be at peace and one would feel fully as belonging to the world. But she says that it's never the case. Integration, because she talks about that, it's integrating the self and external objects that come into play here. She says that it's never over and it's a lifelong journey in which there is never a state of perfection. And that state of perfection is there because inwards, at the very start of life, the infant and even the neonate might feel that they fully understood that that communion with mother is there and is fundamentally the bedrock of all the relationships. But for her, that communion comes at the cost of paranoid fears of being intruded and it also comes with the fear that of being destroyed by the mother so it's not perfect by any means and it's absolutely not something that the psyche necessarily wants to see in its totality but it's something that causes a, a fundamental miss uh, a monk as we would say in french meaning an emptiness, something that isn't there. And she does talk about how it's a fundamental feeling, but in psychopathology, namely in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, of course she doesn't call it bipolar because this is a very modern, um, even though it dates back to the 80s, but it's more modern than she is. So she still calls it uh, manic depressive. So, and she says that, for example, in schizophrenia, the issue is that because there's been the ego is so fragmented because the, the sense of self is so fragile that the integration of the good objects, i.e. the what she calls the, um, the mother, but even more so the good breast, as opposed to bad breast, it's a whole perspective of men inclined that there's a splitting between a good breast that's reassuring, nice, kind and loving, and a bad breast that's destructive, intrusive and hateful in a way and that's something that the infant projects that there is good and there is bad so it's a very interesting fairy but i'm not going to go into these these details i just wanted you to know the general gist of it so basically for her people who have schizophrenia uh, are not able to integrate the good object for reasons that are very interesting, because they're not necessarily external, meaning there's no ne necessary trauma that is bound to it for her. It's an innate fragility of the ego, which I think is very interesting because we often think of all of these sins through the, their causes, and for Klein she doesn't necessarily put that, or at least in this article she detaches herself from the idea of a causality that's to do with external objects. She says that external objects might facilitate um, or make worse a phenomenon, but it's not necessarily all that's going to happen. It's also the inner world of the infant that's going to play a massive role, fundamental role. And she says that in the case of schizophrenia, it, those people who suffer from it are fragmented, are in a way 
unable to integrate a good object into themselves fully because this they feel impeded or they feel that if they integrate it, that, that integration might eat away at who they are. So there's that tension where they try and push it back and therefore they feel a, an incredible sense of loneliness and of despair. And she says that you should never underestimate that suffering, that even though those people might not say it out loud, they are suffering. And that's something I found very touching because it's not something you often associate with Melanie Klein, that care, but she does extend it for the people who suffer from schizophrenia because she feels that they are in a lot of pain and suffering and she's not blaming anyone for that. She's just saying that it's a matter of fact and of loneliness and on how to try and reintegrate the good, the self, and so how everything can try and be balanced in a way. But she says that it's a long and arduous process. And she also talks about bipolar disorder by saying that the fear of the bipolar is that they fundamentally are afraid of their inner hatred and that that hatred is projected onto the other. And there's that fear that the other might turn that hatred against them again. And so it's a very interesting take on bipolar. Yet again, she does not attribute anything to anyone. So it's not victim blaming or pointing any fingers at anyone. And that, I found that good because it breaks with the preconceived notion that Kleinians are trying to point fingers to people. Here she's not doing that. She's really trying to understand the inner core of loneliness for both normalcy and psychopathology. And that I found that to be very interesting. And of course, what I found very interesting is that she says that regardless of the spectrum on which you're on, integration of those elements of loneliness imply always a disidealization, meaning you idealize your relationships, yourself, everything around you, but that by the, the, the simple effect of loneliness and its toler tolerability by the, the self, your this in this idealizing, meaning you're bringing down from an idealized version of yourself and of relationships to a much more realistic uh, version of yourself and of relationships, both with your parents, of course, but also with other people, including the analyst, of course. And that this idealization is always something that's painful. It's never something that's like you go happy, but that makes also things more real, more tolerable, and you are then able to then create something that's genuine in a way. She doesn't never use this the word, but that's what I got of the text. It's something more solid, more real in a way. And she also states that through identification with the good moments, the happy moments, uh, the moments of gratitude, both of the neonate, when the neonate is feeding on the breast, and also when the child is young, he can see the adults enjoying themselves and letting them en enjoy the moment and also giving that enjoyment to the child by letting him free in his own inner world and his play. That basically the child can integrate all those good elements and afterwards build and they're building blocks for his development and for his personality and his psyche. And that l later on, the um, feeling of loneliness is going to be more manageable. It's never going to go away, but it becomes more tolerable, more manageable. And in a way, there's a sense of belonging that can be built, but never mastered. And that's something that I found fundamental, that those the people who are have more psychic issues might feel much more lonely. And to build a relationship with them therapeutic or even otherwise, is also trying to get them out of that fundamental loneliness. And that's something, a very helpful message and a very interesting one. So that's what I took out of the text. And also the fact that for her, the love, the care we give others, enables the individual to not be overwhelmed by the death drive and by the inner aggression they feel. Because for Klein, we all start off with immense inner hatred, aggression, destructivity. And it's through relationships that we're going to be able to build something of love, care, and life itself. The life drive 
is intertwined with the love and care of others, whereas the death drive is innate, destructive and powerful. But for Klein, there's also the fact that all the um, psychic uh, instances, I hope you say that in English, basically the ego, the superego and the id are there from the get-go. There's no pre-id or pre-ego or pre-superego phase. Everything is there, it's just primitive and needs to be solidified throughout development. And good experiences, happy experiences, are the building blocks of the ego and superego. So I hope you found the review interesting and I'll see you in the next one.